All right, back again with another unboxing. Earlier today, Poco announced the update to one of their most affordable devices, and now it has a pro in its name. It's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? This is a look at the Poco M3 Pro in this unboxing and first impressions. we get over to the box, well, you get the yellow branding that I always love from Poco. Uh, we get into the box and we start off with the first layer, which includes documentation, some stickers so that you can really show off your brand loyalty. And then underneath the documentation is an included clear case. This particular clear case is very soft, really wraps around the body. I'm going to put it on the phone a little bit later after I take the phone out. But then we get to the phone itself and the plastic covering, as per usual, shows off some of the key specifications. Obviously, one of the most important bits of information here is that the phone is using the MediaTek Dimensity 700. It's more or less a mid-range processor, which will be able to handle a lot of everyday tasks and whatnot, but I'm going to put a couple of games on here and actually show you how they work later in the video. But the other thing about this processor is that it is 5G enabled, which brings 5G connectivity to a phone that was already incredibly affordable, and that way you'll be able to take advantage of the fastest networks depending on where you are. I have to admit, I really like what Poco has been doing with their designs as of late. This two-tone design, especially with the logo right here, is pretty eye-catching. One funny thing though is, I'm not sure if they needed to put Designed by Poco directly under the even bigger Poco labeling. Now, this is a Pro Edition with 5G, but we of course still have the original M3. And yes, I have the yellow edition finally. It took them a while to send me this one. There's a yellow version of the M3 Pro as well, which I think would look awesome. Maybe I'll get my hands on that later on, but this is already a pretty good look. Now, the difference between these two devices as far as design is concerned is that the uh, glossy backing on the Pro is definitely going to pick up those fingerprints a lot more than the textured plastic material that was on the back of the original M3. A quick look at those cameras and what we have here is a 48 megapixel main sensor, a 2 megapixel macro, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. Probably pretty safe to say that the main sensor is the one you're going to use the most. It's going to be where all the action is. And as we get to the other bits in the box, you do get yourself a 22.5 watt charger in box to support the 18 watt fast charging that is on this phone. So it's not going to be super fast charging on the Poco M3 Pro whatsoever, but 18 is plenty and should be able to get you some battery life back pretty quickly. And that is a 5000 milliamp hour battery, which again is a wonderful spec to have in a phone that is this affordable. I went ahead and tried the clear case on the phone, and while it's nice to have a clear one, that way you can show off the design of the phone, there are a few little quirks to it. It really wraps around the corners of the phone, but also you can find at the top there, there's a cutout for a headphone jack. You do get yourself a headphone jack on the M3 Pro. And one peculiar thing that I've noticed Poco's been doing recently is putting this little flap to cover up the charging ports. It's not a bad thing, but it's also like a why is this there kind of thing. And over on the side, like a couple of their recent releases, the fingerprint reader is in the power button. It's a flat button there, which makes it pretty easy to find. That way you can get into the operating system pretty quickly. So we're going to get through some of the setup right now. And like I said before, this is a 90 hertz refresh rate screen at full HD plus resolution. It's a flat panel at 6.5 inches, which is pretty nice as far as handling is concerned. You're not going to get any issues with like palm rejection or anything like that because there's no curve on the screen. So we get into MIUI 12 and this of course will have the Poco launcher installed. And the first thing that I usually do when it comes to the setup on the Poco launcher is start to turn off all of the extra bits and pieces that I feel clutter up the interface. Now we've We've talked extensively before about the fact that you could get some recommendations, also called ads, <laughs> in uh, parts of the interface that you can turn off as long as you find those settings. Well, that's exactly what I'm trying to do here by turning off the categories at the top and also the suggested applications. But as you can see in the app drawer, there are already a bunch of apps installed that I'm going to have to go through the effort of uninstalling already. Also, if you've ever been curious about some of the wallpapers that I use on my phones, here is a look at where I find them. Shouts out to Seizun Bot on Twitter for these awesome anime mobile wallpapers. Of course, we have everything that MIUI 12 adds to the Android 11 experience. Going through all of the settings, you have things like gesture controls, navigation controls, and all of the extra features like floating windows and the game turbo, which I'll be using a lot. 
Now, a quick mention of the other specifications, this phone can come in at up to six gigabytes of RAM and up to 128 gigabytes of expandable storage. And I will say that expandable storage might be really useful for some of you who put a ton of apps and everything on here. The games that I put on, like a most recent release of My Hero Academia, The Strongest Hero, that's already an over three gigabyte game, not to mention plenty of the other titles that might be around this uh, size or even bigger. So you're gonna have quite a bit of space for all of those apps and games. Speaking of which, my first, say, half hour with the game went by pretty well, uh, even though I had the graphic settings at higher than normal settings. Uh, I was still able to enjoy it, and with the 5G connectivity, if I'm not under Wi-Fi, I will be able to take advantage of faster internet for this online game. But otherwise, I'm sure that gaming will be just fine on here. You'll be able to run all of the major titles, maybe not at the highest settings, but you'll still enjoy plenty of other games like Slay the Spire, which I've been absolutely hooked on recently. But since we're looking at it now, let's talk a little bit more about this display. I already talked about its refresh rate at 90 Hertz and also the size of the display, and it's also full HD plus resolution, but this is also an LCD panel. That in and of itself is not necessarily a bad thing, but there are a couple of things you have to keep in mind. First off, I noticed the viewing angles. As you go to a more acute angle looking at the screen, you do lose quite a bit of that fidelity. And the other probably more important thing is that with an LCD panel, you lose out on always on display capabilities. That said, I'm having a fine time with the display so far. Obviously, this is just my first impressions of the phone, and I've already been watching a little bit of YouTube on here, obviously playing those games, and the only other thing that I really notice is the bezel around the display. Namely, the fact that there's a little bit more in the chin than there is everywhere else. And finally, let's come back to the cameras. Now, Poco has made it clear, even in their flagship devices, that they don't necessarily look at the camera as their number one priority. And I think on the M3 Pro, that's even gonna be more true. Yes, you do get a 48 megapixel main sensor, but you are missing a lot of the different modes you might see in other MIUI-powered camera apps. For any video content creators out there, both the front and the back shooters don't do 4K video recording, they top out at 1080p. And of course, I'll give more thoughts on the camera system in my final reviews, but like many other Poco devices, you can take a look at the M3 Pro as one of those cameras that you can use in a pinch, but not rely upon it for full-on creative endeavors. And so there you have it, a quick first look at the Poco M3 Pro. Poco continues to create a lot of really budget-friendly devices, and this one will come in at around 199 euros for the top-tier model. The 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage edition comes in at 179 euros. There are plenty of budget devices on the market, but one thing I really enjoy about Poco is they know exactly where to add some of their flair so that their phones definitely stand out. Sure, you have a slightly different design from the original M3 and a move to a MediaTek processor, but that move should provide some good performance and, more importantly, provides this affordable device with 5G connectivity. Let me know what you think of the Poco M3 Pro in the comment sections down below. And for more on this phone and plenty more content, make sure you subscribe to my channel. From there, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea, everybody.